Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Today we're going to talk about um, superposition of eigenstates. Uh, this will be kind of within the context of the 1D infinite potential well that we talked about in the last lecture. So let's review uh, the 1D uh, uh, infinite potential well uh, in particular the eigenstates and eigen energies. And um, I've written down the, the uh, expressions for the eigenstates um, the psi sub n's. Uh, remember, we did the we did the um, uh, normalization, and so we have root two over l times sine n pi x over l. N is an integer that goes from one to infinity, <coughs> uh, and l is the length is the size of this one d potential. Okay, it's the length of the box, um, and this is the this is the time independent part the time independent part. So the the, t the spatial part of the wave function, and we remember that. Uh, in this case, where we have a um, time-independent potential, we can separate the vari we can separate the wave function into temporal and spatial parts, and the temporal part always looks like this: e to the minus i omega t, where these omega n's are just uh, the uh, quantized energies divided by h bar, and here are the quantized energies: n squared, h squared over 8 ml squared. Okay, so this is the these two um, these two uh, Figures show show the the wave function on the left side uh, for the different eigen energies. Uh, so the different quantum numbers quantum numbers are here on the left. Okay, eigen energies are here, which correspond to those quantum numbers. So e1 is the ground state. Sometimes we call this e0, but it doesn't mean that n equals zero. Okay, so it's just the uh, the ground state, and we see we have these wave functions, and um, the first, the lowest energy state E1, or the, um, the the ground state, has one antinode, which is shown here. The, this is the probability distribution, which is just psi star psi. Okay, uh, E2 has two nodes, two antinodes, um, again shown here, and three and four and so on. Okay, and you can see the ed energy has a quadratic dependence on the quantum number n. Okay, so this is the context, and, and one of the things that we learned is that these, as we'll discuss, these uh, eigenfunctions, okay, the psi n's, they have a, um, they are, they form a complete basis state, which means that they're orthogonal to each other, and they can be used to uh, generate any random function uh, that satisfies the boundary equations, and we'll talk about that a lot more today. So again, we uh, we when we went over this briefly last time for each uh, value of the quantum number n, uh, which again is an integer starting at one, we have a stationary wave function that is a, a and its associated energy. We have an eigenstate and an eigen energy. The ones that are labeled with uh, odd uh, subscripts one, three, five, seven, etc., are actually even functions um, of the position x, at least with respect uh, with respect to the center of the well, and the ones that are labeled with even um, subscripts two, four, six, eight, etc., are odd. That is, they're anti-symmetric with respect to the center of the well. Okay, so even means symmetric, odd means anti-symmetric with respect to something, with respect to the center of the well. Okay, um, and we remember that as uh, the quantum number n uh, increases, then so does the energy, and um, as we just saw, the wave function has more nodes and antinodes, so there are more wiggles. And um, the um, uh, the uh, eigenfunctions, um, the eigenstate psi sub n, are mutually orthogonal. So that if we multiply uh, one of them with a particular subscript, with a, you know one one eigen uh, one eigenstate by a different eigenstate, and we integrate that over all space, we get the Kronecker delta function, which is zero when the two subscripts are not the same and one when the, t the two subscripts are, okay? So, um, so with this, the, the starting place for today is that these, these, uh, these family of these eigenfunctions, the family of psi sub n's, uh, form a complete basis set that can be used to describe any arbitrary function of f of x that satisfies the boundary conditions, that is that the function is zero at, at uh, x equals zero and, f and x equals l as we've defined the geometry. Um, and so that's that's basically where we're going to start our discussion today of superposition states. <laughs>